If you have already seen my previous video of how I've set up my PyNAS using the Radza Pentasata hat with four SSDs, then today we will be looking at how we can set up RAID 5 using these SSDs. So with this, let's get started. Now before we start off, you have to make sure you have installed Open Media Boot. Now I have a video linked somewhere here as well as into the description below wherein I have shown you how you can set up Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi OS Lite such that you can have a Pi NAS using external drives. Now considering you have already installed Open Media Vault, you will log in for the first time using the default username and password that is admin and Open Media Vault. So now this is the dashboard that you will get. It will be an empty dashboard. And here I will see all the four drives that are connected to the Raspberry Pi 5. Now, just to give you a heads up, you cannot set up RAID using external drives. You have to have them connected to your device and then only you will be able to set them up using RAID 5. So I tried this thing before like using USB drives and it did not work. So, so you will need like a setup wherein you can have all these drives connected to your device directly so first thing what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly format these drives because these are new drives here so i'm going to just quickly format them so with this we have now formatted all the drives and now we are ready to use them now to set up raid using multiple device plugins what you have to do is we have to go to the system here and then we have to go to this plugins and here we are going to search for multiple devices so I'm going to install this plugin here by clicking here right now. So now the installation is all completed. What we are going to do is we are going to go now back to the storage section. And if you see, you see this option called as multiple devices. Now here we have to create like a RAID setup, right? So we have these options for different type of RAID setups like RAID 10, RAID 5, RAID 6. And if you want to understand the various RAID levels, I have this article here. So now this is a very nice article wherein it explains all the various RAID levels, what are its advantages, what are its disadvantages. Like for example, for RAID 0 wherein you don't have any kind of redundancy, in case of disk failure, you basically lose all the data. So this is like the RAID 0 setup. Then we have RAID 1 wherein you replicate it across another device. That means failure of one disk, you still have one disk of data with you. Then you have RAID 4 which is more efficient in terms of storage as per redundancy but has a disadvantage of write operation is slow but however the reads are faster in this case. Now the RAID 5 setup is actually what I want to do. In this case we have all the advantage of, of the RAID 4 and in RAID 5 we get better write speed. The disadvantage here is that we can have up to one disk failure. So if one of the disks fail, we can still recover all the data. But if more than one fail, then we won't be able to recover the data. You can refer to this article. I will add this article link into the description below. So what we're going to do here is we are going to set up RAID 5. So I'm going to click on RAID 5 here. And here I'm going to select all the four drives and then I'm going to click on save. So now if you see over here, all the LEDs are blinking because right now it's creating this RAID setup. So it's doing like a resyncing of data. So since we don't have right now any kind of data, it is trying to create this like a RAID setup inside it. So if you see here the progress, it is showing like 0.2%. Now this will take like around 30 minutes. Now, if you see in terms of capacity, we got like around 2.73 TB. So out of the 4 TB, we get around this much space with the RAID 5 setup. So now we will have this device with MD0. So let's go to the file system here. So what I'm going to do is right now go and click on this mount existing file system and then I'm going to select this. So it is ext4 and I'm going to click on save. Now, if you don't get this in ext4, make sure that you create the file system as an ext4 here. Right now, this was already there in the ext4. That's why I mounted it. Otherwise, you will have to do the ext4 setup and then afterwards mount this as ext4. And with this, I'm now going to apply this configuration here. So now the file system is mounted. Now what we're going to do is we are going to create that shared folder on this file system. So now this is the folder that we will be accessing over the network. So let me call this as shared drive. 
and I'm going to select this file system here and I'm going to keep the permissions for administrator read and write user read and write and then I'm going to save this configuration I'm going to apply these configurations now and then what we are going to do is we are going to go to the services and we are going to enable this SMB service so in the SMB services first of all go here in the settings and enable this and click on save so this will now enable this SMB service through which we are going to access the shared drive but now for this SMB service to serve this shared drive we need to connect the share to this services so now let this configuration get applied and now we will go into the shares section so now here i'm going to click on create and i'm going to select that folder so that shared drive folder that we created i'm going to select this and then after that i'm going to click on save here so now we have this configuration being done we have the smb service enabled and we have connected the storage basically the shared drive to this service i'm going to click on apply and wait for this thing to complete so the configurations are now applied but we have not yet set up the users so let's go to the user section because in order to access this shared drive we need to have certain users and this users should be able to access the shared drive so i'm going to go to this users here now this was the default user that got created when we were preparing the raspberry pi os on the sd card so here what i'm going to do is i'm going to just click on this and i'm going to click on edit and I'm going to reset the password here and I'm going to click on save. Along with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this share folder permissions and then I'm going to allow read write for this shared folder. So this shared drive that we have, I'm going to allow read write and I'm going to apply this configuration. So now with this, all the configurations will now get applied for this user such that using this user, you can access the shared drive. So with this configuration being applied, let's look at how we can actually connect this in our Mac system. So in Mac, what you have to do is you need to open this Finder app and then after that, go to this Go menu here and then click on Connect to Server. And here it will ask you for this. So in this address, what I'm going to put here is right now, I'm going to put, I'm going to put PyFi NAS local here and I'm going to click on Connect. So now it auto connected for me because I have connected this before. Otherwise, what would happen is it would ask you to connect as a different user. So let me connect it here and here it would pop up for the user. So I'm going to enter the user name and the password here. And I'm going to click on connect. So this is something that you will get to see here. Now let's try creating a folder. And if you see a folder is right now created. So this is how you can connect on a Mac system. Now let's see how we can connect this on a Windows system. So now on a Windows system, I'm going to go to my PC and here under the network section, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say map network drive. And here I'm going to put the address of the Pi NAS. And then after this, I'm going to click on browse. So now it has found this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open this and it's going to ask me for a username and password. So with this username and password, I'm going to connect to the drive. So if you see here right now, I have this shared drive now. This is the same shared drive that we had created. And I'm going to click on OK and I'm going to click on Finish. So this is the folder that we had created on the Mac system. And as you can see, this is right now present here. So now let's do a small test and see what speeds are we getting. So I have this bunch of files here that we're going to copy to this shared drive. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this 4 GB file on this NAS drive now let's see the speeds so we are getting like around 100 110 mbps so now remember this is a gigabit network that i've connected that is so the lan cable is connected to my laptop as well as to the gigabit ethernet port of the raspberry pi 5 so it can go maximum up to 128 so in this case i'm getting around 100 110 to 111 mbps for copying this file now let's test with smaller set of files so i have this folder containing smaller set of files and it's copying pretty fast at around 84 mbps now we saw how we can set up raid 5 using multiple device plugin now you can also set up raid using zfs wherein you can set up its own raid levels 
Now I keep on making videos around how you can make things smart at home. So if you want to support this channel, there are links into the description below wherein you can buy me a coffee or you can support me via Patreon. You can also join this channel as a channel member or you can give me one of those super thanks. Now if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button as well as hit that subscribe button for more such videos to come. Till then, take care and I will see you in my next one.